let's take a look at Newton's second law. So Newton's second law is often written F equals MA. And there's a number of little issues with this statement. The first is that Newton actually didn't write it this way. Newton wrote his second law in terms of something called momentum, which we have not seen yet, and we'll talk about later. And second of all, F equals MA is a little bit misleading. Now, in my opinion, there's two better ways to write this. One way is F net equals MA. And the reason why this is better is because F equals MA, the F actually stands for the net force. It's not just any force. It's not just a single force. It's the sum of all the forces acting on an object. And M is equal to the mass of the object, and A is equal to the acceleration of the object. An alternate way to write it that makes sense is this way, sigma f equals ma, where the sigma sign represents summation. The sum of all the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. At any rate, Newton's second law relates three important quantities. It relates net force on an object, mass of an object, and the acceleration of an object. And let's think about this a little bit. So if we have an object where the mass is kept constant, so we always have the same object, same mass, and if I apply a greater net force to that object, Newton's second law suggests that the object will have a greater acceleration. Also, if the net force is kept constant, but we apply that net force to an object with greater mass, then Newton's second law suggests that we should get less acceleration if the mass is greater. Okay, And then also if the acceleration is kept the same, so if we have two objects with the same acceleration, but if one object is receiving a greater net force to get that same acceleration, that means that object must have greater mass. So there's a number of ways that we can interpret this. Another cool thing about Newton's second law is that it shows us where this unit of Newton comes from. Because if you look at the second law, F net equals MA, well, the units on the left have to equal the units on the right. The units of force, we know, are Newtons. The units of mass are kilograms, and the units of acceleration is meter per second squared. And that's where we get the idea that a Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. Now let's try applying this to a couple different examples. Let's say I have an object with a mass of 2 kilograms, and I apply two forces to that object. I apply 8 newtons to the right and 5 newtons to the left. And I want to know what the acceleration of the object is. So I'll come down, use Newton's second law, and if I want to know what the acceleration is, then I need to know what the net force is and the mass. Well, the net force, let's see, I've got 8 newtons to the right, 5 newtons to the left. So if I use right as positive and left as negative, that means the net force is 8 newtons plus negative 5 newtons, which is 3 newtons. And then if I solve for the acceleration after that, the acceleration is positive 1.50 newtons per kilogram. Oh, that's weird. Well, turns out, newton per kilogram, if you do a little math, a little arranging with the units, newton per kilogram is the same as meter per second squared. And I got a positive acceleration, Positive, I said, is to the right. So my acceleration is 1.50 meters per second squared to the right. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have an object with uh, 5 kilograms of mass, and I apply three different forces. Uh, 7 newtons up, 5 newtons up, and 16 newtons down. And I want to know the acceleration. Well, F net equals MA, so I have to figure out what the net force is. Well, I have 7 newtons up, 5 newtons up, 16 newtons down, 5 kilograms of mass. So my net force is negative 4 newtons. Here I've said negative is downward. And let's see, the acceleration then is negative 0 0.800 meters per second squared. Again, I've used that a newton per kilogram is a meter per second squared, so the units come out okay. So the acceleration is 0 0.800 meters per second squared down. And let's try one more example. Let's say I have a mass of 2.5 kilograms and I apply two different forces to it. Uh, 12 newtons to the left and 20 newtons to the right. And I'm going to ask a slightly different question here. I'm going to ask what third force would result in an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared to the left? Alright, so let's go to the second law. And I know the second law is useful here, right? 
Keep in mind, the second law, the big use of it, is it relates net force and acceleration. And that's what this problem is asking us to do. So let's see, net force is equal to m times a. Well, the net force, I know I've got 20 newtons to the right, and I've got 12 newtons to the left, and then I've got an unknown third force that I have to find. But if I add them up, they have to equal 2.50 kilograms, the mass, times the acceleration. And the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared left, so it's negative 2 meters per second squared. So we'll do a little algebra, solve for it. So the missing force has to be negative 13 newtons. And that negative sign means to the left. So my missing third force to give me that acceleration is 13 newtons to the left.